Today in this video, we're going to go ahead and go over the basic controls and tactics to help you learn how to play Ready or Not. Now the content and features in this game may change over time, but for the most part, this should get you started no matter what version of the game you're playing. For a bit of reference, I've been playing this game since early access release, and I have about 500 hours in it. There is a lot to cover, so feel free to check out the timestamps below and jump to certain sections. If you're brand new to the game, I recommend starting at the beginning and watching each section all the way through. If you have any specific questions, feel free to comment down below, or feel free to hop in on my live streams at any time and come say hey. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. As soon as you join in, you'll be in the headquarters. But before we explore this area, go ahead and hit escape, go down to options, and go into your settings. Before we do anything, there's definitely some settings we're going to want to adjust. Now, of course, your controls and binds will be preference, but there still are a few different things to adjust to enhance your gameplay, especially if you want to add more realism to your game. First up, under the game tab, let's go down to HUD, Team View Refresh Rate, and let's go ahead and make that 24. From here, under opti One View Mode, let's go ahead and make that full screen. Now, if you want the most realism out of this game, go ahead and uncheck every one of these boxes except Show FPS. Now, go ahead and scroll down under Gameplay, under Grenade Style, switch it to Quick Grenade Throw, and under Shotgun Reloading, go ahead and do One Press, One Shell. From here, double check your mouse sensitivity, and finally, under Server, Server Side Checksum, make sure this is unchecked if you want to be able to play with other people that have different mods or settings. If this is checked and you're playing on an online session, all players must have the same mods on at all times. From here, go ahead and click Apply. Next up, Graphic Settings. Now I definitely recommend playing this game in full screen, and then go ahead and set your resolution to whatever your monitor's native resolution is. From here, Resolution Scale, make sure this is at 100. And field of view, while this is preference, I definitely recommend starting right around 100 and then kind of adjusting it from there. Next, make sure ADS zoom is checked, mirror reflections are enabled, and under night vision goggle display, I'm gonna personally recommend white phosphor as I think it looks a little cleaner. Go ahead and apply those settings and then head up to the advanced graphics settings tab. Now these settings may take a bit of adjusting depending on your graphics card. However, this game is actually relatively optimized, so there's only a couple settings we're gonna wanna change here. For reference, I have a 3070 Ti, and I can consistently get 144 FPS with these settings. I do, however, recommend shadow quality at medium, VFX quality on high, motion blur off, V-Sync off, and flashlight bounce on. Next up, under world decals, I like to have these enabled as it adds more to the environment, and I keep my fade distance on 90, but this is going to be dependent on your PC, so if you need a few extra frames, go ahead and lower this or turn it off. Under opti One FPS Limit, go ahead and turn this on and set it to 30. Mirror Resolution Scale, I like to have this at 100% with anti-aliasing and decals on. This is another setting you could lower or turn off if you need some more frames. Now at the very bottom, under NVIDIA Reflex, put this on Enabled plus Boost. Go ahead and apply that, and we're ready for our next section. Now under the Audio tab, most of these once again are going to be preference. However, for full immersion and realism, go ahead and take Music Volume and go ahead and just turn it off completely. Also, under Input Audio Device, make sure it's selected to the microphone you're going to want to use if you're talking to other people in-game. Go ahead and click Apply, and then head over to the Controls tab. Now, of course, most of these binds are going to be preference. However, there are a few that will make your gameplay much easier. Now, I definitely recommend using toggle lean left and toggle lean right. It's much easier in this game to control your movement without having to hold down the lean buttons. You can also clear the binds for any of the free look options as it's honestly not that helpful. Next up, under the Equipment tab, while again, most of these will be preference, I definitely recommend taking a look at the Night Vision button and your Toggle Laser Light Attachment bind. You will be using these a lot, especially the Toggle Laser Light Attachment, and because of that, I recommend putting that on a mouse button. Next, under the Interaction tab, take a look at your Interact Yell for Compliance button. You will be using this one a lot, and I definitely recommend having this on a mouse button as well. You also have Fire Select, which is how you rotate your firing modes or put your gun on safe. Now there's a few reload options in this game, reload or check mag, reload, fast reload, or magazine check. Clear everything but reload or check magazine and then just default that to R, and you can do all the same things under that one bind. Finally, under toggle low ready, set that to a button you can also easily access because this is how you will be getting a movement boost in the game. 
Next, under the Teamwork tab, the first section here is how you're going to be able to control your AI teammates, and these buttons will be completely preference. However, I think the mouse wheel and the middle mouse button come in handy for these. Also, if you scroll to the very bottom, this is where you can see Team View Cam. This is the button you'll press to be able to see a picture-in-picture -picture view of your teammate. Also, below that is where you can set your push to talk key and your text chat key. And for the final section, under miscellaneous, everything here once again is preference, but keep in mind where you have your vote yes or vote no buttons, because the vote yes is also the button you're going to press to end the mission after you've completed all objectives. Now that we have all our settings done, it's time to actually load into a game. Now if you go down to play, you have single player, public lobby, or friends only. Go ahead and click single player, and you will load right into the headquarters. Once you've loaded in, head over to the right and into the locker room. From here, head over to this mirror. From here, once you see that symbol, hit your interact key. This will open the personalization screen. From here, you can select the character you want to play as, as well as your uniform. If you see anything that's grayed out, that's because that's for the supporter edition only. Once you've customized your character, turn back around and head right here, back over to this locker. Once you see that symbol, go ahead and use your interact button again, and we're ready to customize our first loadout. Now there's a lot of equipment and guns that you can use and it would take too long to go over all of them. So I'm gonna recommend a very simple setup to get you guys started. First, under the weapons, go ahead and click the primary and go ahead and select the M4A1. Once you've selected it, head over here to modify weapon. Under optic, go ahead and select the hollow sight. Under muzzle, go ahead and select the SFMB break. For under barrel, go ahead and do the vertical grip. For over barrel, go ahead and do the flashlight. And for ammunition, the plus five P mag. Next, let's go ahead and select our sidearm. I'm gonna recommend the Glock or the G19. Once we have that equipped, go ahead and go up to modify weapon. For optic, let's go ahead and select the RMR dot. For muzzle, the compensator. And for under barrel, once again, the flashlight. Now under long tactical, let's go ahead and select the mirror gun. For body armor, go ahead and select heavy armor with coverage on the front and back. For armor material, let's pick ceramic. Next, under munitions, go to the bottom where it says edit slots. Let's go ahead and only take two sidearm mags and give ourselves an extra primary. We'll take two grenades and two tactical items. Go ahead and click save. Under ammo type, go ahead and click here and select JHP. Let's go ahead and select one armor piercing mag as well. So now we have two different ammo types. Let's go ahead and repeat the same thing with our sidearm. In this case, one mag of JHP and one mag of armor piercing. Next, under grenade, make sure we take one stinger and let's take one flash. Finally, under deployables and our tacticals, let's take one door wedge and let's go ahead and take one C2 explosive. Now, lastly, under headwear, we do have a few options here, but I'm gonna recommend night vision goggles or anti-flash goggles. For the sake of this guide, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend night vision goggles. Now, once you have all your equipment selected, up here where it says self, go ahead and click that and you can actually repeat the process for all four of your teammates. It does take a little bit of time, but just know that that area exists here if you wanna give certain teammates certain loadouts for certain situations. I'm not gonna do that for this video, but just know that's how you edit those options. Now that we have our custom loadout, let's turn back around and make our way back through the headquarters and downstairs. Now that we're downstairs, we can go ahead and head over to the shooting range. Now before going into the shooting range, at any time you can use this window here to adjust your loadout. Let's go ahead and walk up to one of the shooting bays. Now let's go ahead and go over the basic controls of our weapon. By default, all guns start in semi-automatic, and you're gonna press the toggle fire select key that you bound earlier. In this case, I have it bound to X. So if I press X right now, I've just switched the gun into full auto or burst depending on the type of gun you have. Also, if you hold that button down, you switch it into the safety mode and the gun is not able to fire until you switch it back to a firing mode. Now there's also three basic reload controls, a single tap of reload, We'll do a standard reload, a double tap of your reload button, we'll do a tactical reload. And if you hold down the reload button, you can check your mag and see the capacity or the ammo that's left. Now in instances like this, where we have more than one ammo type, we can once again hold R and we can see it says AP for armor piercing. And if we wanna to switch to our jacketed hollow point rounds, go ahead and just press one, which indicates your primary, but also indicates a switch to the other ammo type. 
Now we can hold R again and we can see it says JHP so we know we've successfully changed our ammo types. Now the process is the same for secondaries as well. If we press 2 to bring out our secondary, we can hold R, we can see we have armor piercing rounds, and now if we press 2, we will switch it, and we can hold R again, and now we have jacketed hollow points. Now a quick note on magazines, if you do a reload with ammo still in the mag, you will keep it. If you do a reload with no ammo in the mag, you'll drop it. And if you do a tactical reload, you will drop it as well. That being said, it is important to know that you can actually look down and pick back up any magazine, whether it's full or empty, that you may have dropped. Also, if you have teammates using the same ammo type as you, you can drop mags for them as well. Now, if you're practicing here on the shooting range and you run out of ammo, if you turn right back around, there is a crate right here with additional ammo. Now, let's go ahead and go over our grenades. If you press three on your keyboard, you'll bring out a grenade. And if you press three again, you'll bring out the other type of grenade if you're carrying more than one type. From here, to throw a grenade, click and hold and throw. Now a pro tip when it comes to throwing grenades, use your character model's finger and thumb to aim your grenade. For example, if I wanna hit that wheel right here, I'm gonna have my player model's finger right on the middle of the wheel and I can kind of use that as a crosshair. It's also important to note that if you pull the pin on a grenade, you cannot put it away or cancel it. You must throw it even if it's a waste. Now finally, the last control with the grenades that is important to note is the quick throw and that is if you press G, you'll instantly take out the grenade and throw it. One final tip on the use of your weapon is if you go ahead and hit the toggle flashlight or laser button, you can see we have our flashlight on. We can also toggle it once again to turn it back off. Keep in mind that the light only stays active if you have the gun out. So if I was in a dark area and decided to switch to a grenade, I no longer would have any light. Now player movement in this game is very similar to other games you may have played, such as Rainbow Six Siege or Escape from Tarkov. In my opinion, it's actually even simpler in this game, and there's really not too many things to go over. You of course have your WASD keys to move around, you have your ADS button, you have a crouch button. Now at the time of making this video, which is July 2022, there is no prone button. Maybe that will be added later on. Now aside those basic controls, the most important one is the toggle low ready. Now we did set a bind for that at the beginning in this video. In my case, it's caps lock and if I press that, my gun goes into the low ready state. While in this low ready state, you cannot left click or shoot, but you can right click to quickly bring your gun back up. Now the biggest benefit of this bind and why I highly recommend using it and using it often, if we walk forward, you can see this is going to be our max movement speed with our current setup. However, if we go into our toggle low ready position and once again walk forward, we do get a significant movement boost, which is really nice to get around maps easier. Now, if you have no armor, light armor, or heavy armor, your movement speed will be a different default, but activating toggle low ready and bringing your gun down will give you a little movement speed boost regardless of the armor type you have. Now, finally, our last important mechanic is our toggle lean right and our toggle lean left. Those controls, combined with your toggle low ready, allows you to be as efficient and tactical as possible. For example, if we were taking cover here, we could stand up, toggle low ready, quickly move to our next bit of cover, crouch, lean, and aim. We could quickly lean left to go back into cover. We could stand up, lean back right, toggle low ready, lean back. We have a lot of options between the toggle low ready and the lean controls to help us succeed in many different types of gunfights. Now another control is very important is your walk button. Now this mostly is going to be helpful when it comes to aiming while you're ADS'd. As you can see, as we walk at our normal pace, there is a lot of movement when we ADS. But if we move forward while holding our walk button, you can see how much more steady it is to aim. So this can come in handy when you really want to track something. Now one final tip on movement, if you're ever moving and you feel like you're going extremely slow and you can't figure out why, you may be leaned in one direction or crouched or both at the same time causing you to move extra slow. So if you're ever moving and you feel like you have glue on your shoes, reset your lean position, make sure you're stood up and then keep moving forward.
So to go over the equipment, I went ahead and went down into the training area that's in the bottom floor of the headquarters. Now, if you remember from earlier, we went ahead and selected the mirror gun slash the opti wand for one of our pieces of equipment. So let's go ahead and press five and we take that out. Now, if you ever played the old SWAT 4 game, this works the same way. Essentially, if you hold left click, you're able to see around your environment. You could also walk up to an open door, kind of push it through the door and look around the corner. Also, if you approach a door that's closed, you could look at the bottom and you have this symbol here. As soon as you see that symbol, you can click and hold and you now can see under the door. Conversely, if you have your gun in your hand, you could actually still walk up to the door, look at the bottom, see the symbol of your mirror gun, press your interact button, take out your mirror gun, and once again, use it. Now keep in mind, the mirror gun will only work on a wooden door. If you come across a door that's metal, it will not work. And if you look at the bottom of a metal door, you will not have the opti -Wand symbol. Since we're on the topic of doors, let's go ahead and talk about the basic options you have when it comes to doorways. First, anytime you approach a door, you'll have three options. If you look in the middle of the door, you'll see one symbol. If you look at the door handle, you'll have another. And if you look toward the bottom, you'll have a foot symbol. If we look at the middle one and press our interact button, we will open the door in its entirety. Conversely, we can look at it again to close it. Next up, if we look at the door handle, we will do a peek. We can interact with it again to close it. And finally, if we look at the bottom symbol with the foot, we'll kick it right open. Now, if you ever approach a door and you see the symbol is red, you can see how there's a red circle around our interaction option. And if we look at the door handle, there's a lock pick icon. This of course means the door is locked and we cannot open it like normal. Now we do have a few options here for entry, but the most basic is to look down at the door handle, press your interact button, take out your lock pick, left click and hold and unlock the door as normal. Now that we've done that, you can see that red circle has gone away, indicating that the door is now unlocked and we have our usual options. Now, if you're in a hurry and you don't want to actually lock pick the door, what you can do is look at the bottom. You can kick the door once and you've now unlocked it. From here, we could now peek it or we could open it. Just remember that the kick to unlock only works when the door is locked. Otherwise, you'll just kick the door right open. Now, aside from those three ways of entering a door, if you bring explosive charges like we have in this case, we can actually look above the door handle and we'll see the explosive slash breach option. From here, look at that, hit your interact button, bring out your door explosives. From here, look down at your door handle until you have this symbol show up, click and hold to set the charge. From here, you're gonna wanna get off to the side and left click when you're ready. Now the next piece of equipment we brought with us was our door wedge. If we press four on our keyboard, we'll go ahead and bring that up. And these are very useful for locking down certain areas of the map. To deploy one, simply walk up to the door, look toward the bottom left of the door, look down until you see this door wedge symbol, left click and hold, and you'll deploy it. At this point, you can no longer open the door in any way, and you can also no longer kick the door open. Now, if you do need to get through the door again, go ahead and look at your wedge, press the interact button, take out your multi-tool, go ahead, remove the wedge, and once again, you can open the door. Another helpful piece of equipment that you actually have with you at all times, whether you select it or not, is the chem light. Now with every mission, every teammate will start with a handful of these. And depending on the bind that you set to use these, you'll drop one and it's gonna offer you a little bit of light as well as a marker. I find these to be very helpful where you don't wanna use your flashlight or night vision goggles. It does give off a good amount of light or they're also very good for marking rooms and areas you've already cleared. Now, even if you deploy a chem light, you might find the area is still too dark or the flashlight just does not give off enough light. In this case, go ahead and hit N on your keyboard and drop down your night vision goggles or press N again to take them off. Now, of course, with any night vision goggle, they work the best in pure darkness, but keep in mind, as soon as you look at a lot of bright light, it starts to get a little overpowering and hard to see, so make sure you flick them back off. Now that we know how to interact with our equipment, let's go ahead and learn how to interact with suspects or civilians. Now, you will encounter many suspects and many civilians on each map, and your main goal is to try and secure them without having to use lethal force. In this case, we have a civilian here. What we want to do is raise our gun up and look right at him, press our yell for compliance button, Down on your knees. Flying officer, I'm not one of them. and then react accordingly. In this case, he has cooperated, so we're clear to approach. We're gonna wanna go up from the back, go ahead and see this interact symbol here, which is the secure slash zip tie button. Hold our interact key. Stay still. Get off me. 
and secure them. Now that they're secured, we can report them. Civilians standing by for trailers. Now, of course, this is the training area, so it's just gonna reset, but normally they would still sit there zip tied. It's also important to know while you're in the zip tying animation, you cannot cancel it and you have to wait to be able to use your gun or move again. Now there will be many instances where even after yelling at them, the civilians will not cooperate. If that does happen, the best solution is to either throw a flash or stinger grenade in their room. You can also use the taser or pepper spray equipment if you brought that with you. If you shoot nearby, sometimes that scares them into cooperating, or you can of course blast them into the abyss. However, you will fail the mission. Now anytime you see a dead civilian or dead suspect, you still do need to report them. Civilian is DOA. And it's also important, you do walk up to them and still secure them. Now when it comes to arresting suspects, this guy, we did yell out for compliance and he did cooperate. In this case, same thing, we go up from behind and we handcuff him, then we report him, but we also have to look down and secure his weapon. Now here's an example of a suspect that did not comply with our command. So we did have to shoot him. In that case, we want to approach him, we want to report them, we want to secure them, and we want to secure their weapon. Again, sometimes suspects will not be actually killed when you shoot them, and it's very important to secure them or they might get back up and grab their weapon. At this point, we've pretty much covered the basics of equipment, movement, and controls that you'll need to know. Now, we're ready to hop into a mission and start playing. To start a mission, you're gonna wanna go to the room you started in when you first loaded into the game, head over to this desk, look at the desk and interact with it, and select any one of these pins. Now, while you're learning, I'm gonna recommend this pin right here to play the 4U gas station. It's a relatively easy map with some dark and some light areas, and it's very easy to navigate and learn on. Go ahead and click the pin, confirm your location, and select any one of these modes. On any map, the easiest mode is always gonna be barricaded suspects, and I recommend that one as well. Go ahead and click accept. From here, you've selected a level. Now, we need to go over to this red carpet to start the mission. Now, if you're playing by yourself, you will always have four AI teammates to control and use. Now they're broken up into red team and blue team, and you can interact with them by pressing your squad command button that you would have bound earlier. In this case, I have mine on my middle mouse wheel, so if I click the middle mouse wheel, I bring up the commands. If I scroll with the middle mouse wheel, I can select blue or I can select red, or I can select gold, which is the whole squad. From here, I want them to fall in, so I'm gonna press two, and they're gonna start following me wherever I go. Now, if I don't want them to follow me, I can bring the menu back up and press the cover button cover me. and they will hold in place and cover as I move away. Now, if I want to send them somewhere, I can open the menu back up, look in the direction I want them to go and hit the move to button. Move to my front. Now, as soon as they get to the spot where they were sent, they will hold and cover until I give them a new order. If we look back into the menu, we also have the deploy option. If we go into that, we can see we can deploy flash, stinger, chem light, or shield. These options are gonna vary depending on the equipment you've set for them. In this case, while we're in this menu, let's have them throw a flashbang. Let's go ahead and look where we want them to throw it and then deploy flashbang. Now, depending on the bind you set, you can use the team view cam. In my case, it's the T button on my keyboard. If I press that, I now see a picture in picture view of one of my teammates and I can press T again to cycle through different views. And each time I press it, I'm gonna get a new viewpoint from a different teammate. If I hold it, it'll go away. Now, when you have the menu open, the commands you have do change depending where you're looking. In this case, if we look over to the door, we can see how they changed and we have new options. We can select stack up, which means they'll go to the door, see if it's unlocked or not, and be ready for entry. Now, since some teammates have the mirror gun, we can also have the mirror under the door and get information about traps or who's on the other side of the door. If there was a trap, we could have them disarm it, or if they brought wedges, we could have them wedge the door. Now, if we go back to the other menu, we can see we have open. We can then open the door, clear it, or open the door, clear it, and use utilities. Finally, if we go to the breach menu, we can have them kick and open it or C2 and open it. You could use a breaching shotgun if you did bring that, but in this case, they don't have it equipped. So to show that off, we would open up our menu, look at the door. Let's go ahead and have breach, C2, and let's throw a flash in there. Once you do that, they'll move up and check the door. They'll plant their C2, they'll prep the nade, and they'll get ready to breach and clear. 
Now a quick note on using C2, whether it's yourself or your teammates, sometimes you want to check with the mirror what's on the other side of the door, or you might blast the civilian or suspect that's on the other side. Now one more AI control that's important to learn is the hold command and the execute command. So if we bring back up our menu, let's go ahead and select red team, and let's go ahead and have them open and clear this room, but let's have them hold and also have blue team go in on their side at the same time. So we're gonna look at the door, we're gonna hold our Q command, which for me is left shift. We're gonna have them open and clear. Now you can see if we bring back up our menu, the only command there is execute or cancel. And if I mouse wheel and change to my other menu, I can now see that blue team is waiting for orders. So let's go ahead and go over to blue team. Let's go ahead and select blue and have them over here on this door. Let's go ahead and hold down our Q command and open and clear. Now, if I bring the menu back up, you can see now blue is holding and ready for an execute command, just like red is. However, they did say the door was locked. So if I activated this command, they actually wouldn't do anything because it's locked. I would have to give them a new command now knowing that. So in this case, I'm gonna hit cancel. And now I have new options here. And I'm gonna go ahead and have them hold, reach, kick, and clear. Now, if I go back into my menu and go over to gold, which is everybody, I can hit execute and both teams will go at the same time and do their selected commands. If we look at our picture in picture cam, we can see red team also went in at the same time. Now I did the same thing. I have them queued up on two different doors, both different teams, and let's go ahead and do it at the same time and see what happens. So as you can see, they do their specific command at the same time. Of course, that comes in handy when there's multiple entryways into one room and you want to breach quickly. At this point, you pretty much have all the information you need to be able to get started to play the game. If you have any other questions or comments, let me know down below and I'll help you out as best as I can. Feel free to jump in the live stream at any point. And other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. Clear out. Hands up! Stay on me. Where were you? Make him secure. This one's secure. Get your hands yep, on. Go ahead, keep talking. Talk reporting. Roger. Trailers inbound. Open. Deploy stingers and clear. Copy that. Open it. You stingers to clear. Look at that. It's open. Step around. around. Deploying chem light. It's unlocked, sir. All right. Drop your weapon. I said now. Popping stinger. Slow light deployed. The weapon now. Hands up above your head. Drop the weapon now. Restrain targets. All done. Contact is secure. Suspect killed. Contact to entry team. Copy that entry team. Notifying trailers. Cover this area. Roger. On and now. Hands up above your head. Copy that. Entry denied. Door locked. Let's move! Ready to knock something down. The suspect is expired. Talk report. Civilian is DOA. Copy that entry team. Notifying morgue. The suspect is expired. Talk to high ground. Roger that. Continue with your mission. Cam light out. Cover this area. Roger that. Hands up, do it now. Copy that. It's open. 
Civilian has expired. Repeat, civilian is DOA. Talk to high ground. Roger that, entry team. Hands up, Tag do it now. Keep moving. Suspect killed. Talk to entry team. Roger that. Continue with your mission. Civilian is alive but unresponsive. Talk reporting. Knock this door down. Moving up. We've got a dead civilian here. This is talk. Affirmative entry team. Drop your weapon and get your hands up. Civilian is DOA. This is Talk. We've got a dead suspect here. Talk to Element. The suspect Roger has that. expired. Continue with your Come mission. Suspect killed. Talk to Entry Team. Roger that. Down on your team. knees. Tag hands up. Above your going. head. All right. Mine's Police, the hands up. Down on your knees. Hands up. Do it now. Hands up! Do it now! Stay still. Ah! These cuffs are too tight! The suspect's secured. Talk to element. Roger that. Civilian is still away. Coming. Proceed with caution. Open door. Clear with stingers. Civilian has expired. Repeat, Copy civilian that. is DOA. Open for business. Talk to entry team. Copy that, entry team. Notify the trailer. Low light deployed. Open. Deploy stingers and clear. Copy that. It's open. Stingball going out. The civilian has expired. Repeat, civilian is DOA. Talk reporting. Affirmative entry team. Hey. Move to my front. Copy that. Moving out. Drop it. Oh. Get your hands up. Deploying cam light. Civilian is DOA. Talk to entry team. Affirmative entry team. Cam light out. Civilian is down but breathing. Notify EMTs. Talk reporting. Drop 
deploying chem light. Move in and clear it. Hands up now. Drop your knees. Moving up. The suspect has expired. Talk to element. Affirmative entry team. We've got a dead suspect here. Talk reporting. Roger that. Continue with your mission. Away. Falling behind. Restrained targets. Copy that. Falling in. The suspect has expired. Contact in custody. Talk to entry team. Police, Roger. hands up! Notifying medical. This is talk. Great work, entry team. Keep it up. Suspect killed. Talk to element. Affirmative entry team. Move over there. Talk to high ground. Copy that entry team. Notifying trailers. Deploy chem light. Cover this area. Affirmative. Hands up! Disarming trap! C2, flashbang it and clear it. Let's knock this door down. Cam light out. Get ready. Do it now. Move to my front. Need to get into position. Suspect DOA. Talk to entry team. Roger, entry team. 
Notifying medical. Civilian contact. Make him secure. Talk to high ground. Roger, entry team. Notifying medical. Contact is restrained. What are those? Part of the job, man. Open and clear. Talk to entry team. Roger, entry team. Great work. Keep going. Roger. Look at that. It's open. Restrained targets. Secured and ready for trailers. You're lucky this didn't end well. these cuffs a bit. This is Talk. Roger, entry team. Great work. The Keep going. Support on me. I'm with you. Police, hands up! Get down, I wanna see hands! Hands up, do it now! Hands up, do it now! Fall in, make him secure. Contact is in custody. I've seen people get robbed in broad daylight. Talk reporting. Copy entry team, notifying trailers. Open clear with flashbangs. Copy that. It's unlocked, sir. Flashbang out! Low light deployed. We need help! Get down! I want to see hands! Me. Hands I'm up above your head! Not one of them. The civilian has expired. Repeat, civilian is D.O. Talk reporting. Me. Get me out of here! Affirmative entry team. Civilian cuffed and prepped for evac. This is talk. Roger that. Trailers incoming. Proceed with caution. Provide cover. Affirmative. On me. Copy. Coming to you. Move to my front. Copy. We're moving on now. Move to my front. Roger. On the move. Provide support on me. Copy. 
coming to you. Move over there. Roger, on the move, sir. Provide cover. Okay, roger that. On the move. On me. Okay, I'm on your six. Down on your knees! Drop a light! All right, light stick out, sir. Provide support on me. Permanent, moving into your position. C2, flashbang it and clear it. All right, copy that. Fire in the hole. Post up and cover. Yeah, copy that. We've got a dead suspect here. Talk to entry team. Roger that. Continue with your mission. All right, Roger. It's Civilian is down, but breathing. Notifying MTs. Talk reporting. Through the door and clear. All right, copy that. We've got a dead suspect here. Light Talk reporting. Away. Roger, entry team. Notifying medical. Provide cover. Yeah, copy that. Cover this area. Copy that. Open and unlock. Open the door. Clear it. On the move. Civilian is alive, but unresponsive. Talk reporting. Civilian contact. Taking care of it now. All right, lights stick out. Moving in clear. Yeah, copy that. Get down, show me your hand. No one of them. Drop your weapons. The suspect is expired. This is talk. Affirmative entry team.
for strained targets. Secure. All ready for trailer. It's a part of the job, man. Talk to high cover. ground. Right. Roger, right. entry team. Right, Great work. Keep going. It's open. We're good to go. Restrained target. Restrained targets. He's not going anywhere. Please get down. Restrained targets. Don't worry, you're not in trouble, okay? Secured and ready for trailers. This is talk. Copy entry team. Notifying trailers. Suspect is secure and ready for pickup. This is talk. Roger entry team. Great work. Keep going. Move in and clear it. Roger that. It's open. We're good to go. Check your cover! Wounded civilian Close stable and prep for evac. Talk to entry team. Hands up! Talk to entry team. Affirmative entry team. Provide support on me. Roger, coming to you. 